All right, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> morning. How's, how's everyone morning. doing? Morning. <laughs> well, yeah. well, so. <laughs> Pretty good. All right, all right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, I know summer went uh, too fast, right? Um, I had a busy, zum uh, busy uh, summer. Um, but, you know, uh, all was good, all was good. And I hope you had a um, great summer as well. Um, but yeah, um, if, uh, if you don't mind, and if you, if you have your video working, I would like to see your faces. Um, if you don't have your video working, no worries. Um, I just wanna see, uh, you know, uh, the entire class, not just, uh, uh, your picture, but hopefully uh, <laughs> your actual faces. Uh, and um, let's see, I, I, I'm i supposed to have um, uh, 56, uh, looks like, uh, 56 students in this class. So um, I'm, I'm missing one or maybe uh, that person dropped. I'm not sure, <laughs> but uh, yeah, let's just get started. And um, uh, yeah, welcome to uh, E410. Um, in a moment, I will share my screen. Um, but uh, before um, I do that, uh, I would just like to introduce myself first. Um, I think uh, some of you, yeah, some of you took my class before. Uh, so I apologize for hitting this twice <laughs> or the second time, sorry. <laughs> Um, um, I'll, I'll start with my, my name. Uh, my name is Taufik. Um, if you, uh, when you enroll to this class, you already probably noticed that, um, that my first name is kind of weird, right? <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that, maybe not. Uh, but if you, um, uh, go ahead and check my first name on, on your schedule. Um, you know, it's not really my name, right? Uh, so people who took my class, I've already told them this, uh, but I think most of you have not had me uh, before. So the first name um, that Cal Poly uh, gave me is NFN, right? Um, but that's not my real name, as I said, you know. <laughs> my real name is actually just one name, Halfik, that's it. Right? I don't have any first name, I don't have any last name, I just have a name. That should be enough, right? So, um, like Beyonce, uh, like yeah, like uh, um, Madonna, like Cher, you know, <laughs> all of those uh, famous people. You know, although I'm not famous, but um, hopefully I am, I am someday. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, yeah, so NFN is just a name that um, Cal Poly uh, gave me because I don't think they know what they were doing, you know, they're just saying, ah, you know, how come these guys don't have any first name? So let's just give him NFN, which you probably know what it stands for, right? Stands for? No first name. Uh, exactly, yes. <laughs> so I just want to uh, make that clear uh, before you call me Nafen, that my name is not Nafen, right? Uh, <laughs> it's uh, Taufik, okay? So please call me Taufik. Um, don't call me by, uh, by my uh, given first name, by Cal Poly, right? Which is a fake name anyways. So um, anyhow, I got that out of the way. Um, and then um, you can probably tell that um, I have accent and um, I, I, I was not born in this country. I was uh, born and raised uh, in a halfway around the globe. Uh, that country's name is Indonesia. I don't know if you heard about that country before. It's the fourth largest in the population, in terms of the population after the US. Has about uh, 17,000 islands. So I, I was born in one of the islands, a uh, tiny island of Java. You probably heard about ja the word Java before, which probably means coffee here in the US, but um, it's actually a name of an island. <laughs> uh, most, uh, probably most populous uh, island in the world. Um, very tiny island and it's sinking every year, you know, because more and more people, you know, move to that island. Anyhow, 
I was born and raised in the capital of the country of Jakarta, you know, a city of about maybe 12 million people. And, um, and then I migrated here to the U.S. in 1989 to pursue, um, you know, um, my bachelor's in electrical engineering, bachelor of science in electrical engineering, which I received from uh, Northern Arizona University, Flagstaff. Beautiful place, you know. This place reminds me of Flagstaff, by the way. Um, you know, small town, small college town, um, you know, beautiful town. But it was uh, kind of shocking to me because, you know, I, I grew up in a metropolitan area, you know, just crowded, you know, people you know, all around. And then I moved to this town that, that has only 60,000 people. So for a, for a young, you know, um, student uh, such as myself uh, back then, and you know, it was quite an overwhelm overwhelming uh, change. But, you know, I got through it and then um, uh, decided to move to uh, Chicago for my master's, which I received in 1993 in electrical engineering as well. And then uh, finished my PhD from Cleveland State in 1999. And then, um, yeah, and then after I finished my PhD, then I, I got a job here at Cal Poly, which I, you know, I'm really uh, fortunate to, uh, I was really fortunate to, uh, to have, because I didn't really know much about, you know, Cal Poly back then. Um, you know, I was, I, you know, I spent most of my school years in Midwest. And um, when I finished my PhD, I, I, got an, you know, I got offers from several universities in the, mostly in the East, East Coast. And I tried applying for one in the West Coast, which is, which was Cal Poly, you know, that, that was the only school I applied <laughs> on the West Coast. And, um, and then um, I got um, uh, the offer as well from Cal Poly. And then when I asked, you know, what my wife, where should I, you know, which, which one should I pick? And then <laughs> she said, you know, right away, uh, the one in the West Coast, because we got sick of the snow there, you know, and then the cold and chilly winter, you know. <laughs> The snow is good when it's falling uh, from the sky, but then the next day it was just ugly and just too much hassle. So that's why um, I took this job, uh, not knowing what Cal Poly was about, and then moved here and found out that it is, you know, um, a great school. And I, I wish that I knew about Cal Poly and, you know, spent my, or, you know, studied here, um, but, um, that's okay, you know. <laughs> at least, uh, at least now I'm 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 at Cal Poly now. Uh, even though I'm, um, I'm I'm in that Cal Poly as a in a different role, not as as a student, but as a faculty, and so I can still um, you know um, contribute, I, I guess you know to uh, <laughs> to Cal Poly. So, uh, so that's uh, a little bit about me. Um, um, I hope I'm not forgetting anything here. Um, yeah, so then uh, I came here to Cal Poly in 1989. Uh, so this is my 21st year, um, isn't it? Yeah, 21st year. Uh, uh, so I've been at Cal Poly for 21 years, basically. Right. Um, so that's um, uh, that looks like it's a long time, but you know, believe me, when you enjoy your work, you know, time flies. Uh, so. Um, yeah, so it, it still feels like you know, just yesterday that I started my first day at Cal Poly and teaching this class too. You know, that was my first, this is, this was my first class at Cal Poly. And um, uh, guess how many people I had at that time? It's not 55 or 56 like we have today. Ten. Uh, <laughs> can you guess? Eight? Oh, how do you know that? Wait, uh, wait a second, I told you that, huh? <laughs> yes, that was all, there, there were only eight students in the class back then. Right? Um, and so my job was, or back then, was that um, the department wants me to uh, rejuvenate uh, power electronics you know, um, classes. And so that, uh, that's what I've been doing the past 21 years. Believe it or not, it's a never-ending job, you know, um, trying to um, keep up with the technology. You'll see later when we um, uh, go over some slides. 
but it is a ex very exciting field, and I'm glad that you're taking this class. Um, um, you know, as I said earlier, you know, very hard uh, to keep up with the technology because it's always advancing real fast um, to the point that you know I, I'm just going to hang on to just one of the subtopics in power electronics. Otherwise, I'm, I'm overwhelmed <laughs> with the with all the things that are going on in power electronics. So. Um, so welcome again to this class. Um, um, again, I'm, I'm so glad that you are, that you have the opportunity to take this class. Um, you'll see hopefully uh, by the end of the uh, class today, I, I'm hoping that I, 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 um, I can get you um, excited about uh, the class and uh, you know, look forward to you know, learning stuff, you know, learning materials from this class uh, because of the importance of this uh, class to uh, EEs especially. All right. Um, any question before I proceed? Oops, um, you see my screen, yes? Yep. Yeah. All right. So here's what we have uh, for today. Um, a lot to do. Um, so first of all, uh, first of all, I'm going to uh, I'm, I'm going to be recording uh, every lecture. Um, I hope that you don't mind that um, at all, because uh, what I plan to do is, you know, as you know, this is an online um, synchronous um, lecture. And uh, in addition to doing the Zoom, I'm also recording the lecture so that I could uh, upload uh, the, you know, the, the recorded um, lecture on YouTube. So just in case uh, you want to uh, go over what we, um, have in the class the second time, or somehow you missed the class, then you could definitely check out uh, the the videos. Okay, so um, yeah, if you uh, um, let's say if you uh, don't want um, your face to be uh, shown on the video at any time, just turn off your video. Okay, um, and I respect that uh, um, you know privacy. Okay. Um, but hopefully uh, everybody's okay and most of the time uh, your video is going to be turned off anyways. Uh, I'll, we'll talk about you know some basic rules on, on doing the Zoom uh, lectures. All right. So um, I, I did the welcome and introduction, roll call, and then I, uh, I'm going to go over the Zoom basic rules. You know, so please stay on mute unless being asked to unmute or want to ask questions. All right. Uh, do not use the chat room to ask questions. I won't be, I won't be able to see it. Uh, rather, just unmute yourself and feel free to in interrupt any time. Okay? Uh, as I was going through the slides, right, if you have any questions, you know, don't type it on the chat. Again, I would not be seeing it. You know, I'll, I'll be busy you know, <laughs> uh, or focusing on the slides. So just, uh, just like in the classroom, physical classroom, you know, just interrupt me. Right? Um, okay? My preference is for you to turn on your video when I'm not lecturing. For example, at the beginning of the class, you know, just like a you know, physical classroom, when I enter the classroom, I like to see your faces, right? So it's the same thing here. Um, but then as I start uh, the lecture, you can turn off like right now. And when I'm sharing um, um, materials on the screen, uh, feel free to uh, turn off, you know, because I, I won't be able to see your face anyways, um, all right? Um, also, before the end of the class, after I'm done, you know, um, with the slides, you know, I like to see your faces. I like, I like to get to know you. I know this is a very limited uh, interactions, and unfortunately, with the, with the online, you know, um, um, lectures. But you know, I'm trying, I'm trying my best to get to know you, you know, um, just like I, I would um, in a, you know, physical classroom, right? So the more I see your faces, the better, you know, because then I get uh, to attach, you know, names with uh, faces, right? Um, during discussion, so if I turn off, uh, anytime I turn off um, the, the sharing, uh, the screen sharing, then, you know, I like to see your faces as well, as well. If I throw out a question and I like to see your reactions, participations, you know, by turning on your videos, right? Um, and maybe, maybe, just maybe, you know, I sh share some stories. I like to do that in the past. You know, I like to share uh, stories, like to tell stories about my, uh, my you know, um, th interesting things that, you know, happened in the past. You know, I like to sh share that with you if we get the time. 
Um, so, um, yeah. Uh, so it, when when I do that, you know, it'll be good to to see your faces as well. All right. And then during midterm and final, um, you know, this is something that uh, I would really, really like and hope hoping that your video is working so I can actually see your faces during your test. Okay. Um, just like in a regular class, if you decide to join the Zoom lecture, then I am expecting you um, to uh, pay full attention to the class and participation. Um, uh, I realize that um, you know uh, with uh, Zoom, um, you can actually do other activities uh, while um, turning on the, the 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 Zoom lectures. But you know, um, I think uh, if you're willing to uh, invest your time. Uh, tuning in and might as well pay attention to uh, to the lectures, you know, because that's the the best way to learn the materials is to actually pay attention, right? And this goes without saying. Right? It's the same thing uh, when we're in the physical class, uh, physical classroom, right? Um, you 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 can be there, but if you're doing something else, you got distracted, you know, doing some other stuff, then um, pretty sure you're not gonna uh, be able to understand, you know, the material, right? Uh, that that is it for Zoom basic rules. Any question on this? If not, let's um, move on to the next item: review course syllabus. So I've already provided that uh, on Canvas right here. That's what it looks like. Everybody can see my uh, my Canvas here, E410 Canvas. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yep. Very good. So uh, I'm not an expert on putting together you know, Canvas. This is the, my best effort in, in uh, using Canva, Canvas. Hopefully I get better um, as I use this more and more. Um, so let's uh, uh, look at um, what this class is all about, okay? So again, welcome to E410, Introduction to Power Electronics. Um, on the catalog, they call it Power Electronics 1. But I like to call it differently. Uh, this is uh, indeed an introductory course to power electronics. Right? Um, as you can see from the course um, description right here, and you can see the prerequisites, right? Um, introduction to power electronic converters and power semiconductor devices, steady state analysis, performance study, design and of uncontrolled and controlled rectifiers, non-isolated and isolated DC to DC converters, AC voltage controllers, single phase inverters, and we will also be using commercially available software. We'll talk about that in a moment. Who should take this class? In my opinion, every EE should have this class. It's too bad that this class is not required for our program, but um, as you will see, uh, especially by the end of this class, uh, you will see that you know this class is one of those, you know, um, uh, fundamental class in classes in EE where every E should have, right? Um, why? Well, because, you know, as I said right here, as I wrote right here, uh, most, if not all electrical system require some type of energy conversion circuits to be able to connect an energy source to the system load, right? I'll talk more about this uh, later. Therefore, it is essential for every, every EE to know at least the basic techniques to convert electrical energy from one form to another. Guess what this class covers? Right? The basic techniques right? uh, to convert energy. So what I'm trying to say here is that you know when you have an when you're designing an electric, electrical system, which you will be right, because you're an electrical engineer after you graduate, then you will be dealing with electrical system. Then 100%, um, you will you will have to have a supply or energy source, right? Um, you can't operate electrical systems without some type of energy source, right? And unfortunately, this energy source, most of the time, uh, they do not match uh, what the electrical system's using, right? So therefore, there's gotta be a way for you to bridge the two, right? To bridge uh, the type of source that, uh, that is available and the type of load that you will be operating. And this class is about bridging that, bridging those two, right? Now, um, yeah, as an electrical engineer, you should know at least the basic of doing that, right? Uh, which makes sense. And you know, um, 
more and more universities in the world are actually requiring this class for EEs, right? So again, uh, hopefully someday this class is a required class, right? Number two, uh, any engineering student who would like to learn how efficiently, uh, how, to, how to efficiently convert electrical energy from one form to another form, right? So other majors, they, they, they may know uh, the basic um, from reading or from um, uh, looking at different articles, uh, how to convert um, energy from one form to another form, electrical energy, but um, um, there, there are always you know, ways to uh, improve uh, the efficiency of doing that, right? So it's not just about converting energy, but how do you convert it efficiently? That's what you will also be learning in this class, right? So that's why, again, this class is important. And we'll talk about why um, being efficient is important. Right? And then the third one is that anyone who is interested in a career with the power semiconductor, DC to DC converter industries, renewable energy systems, industrial controls, utilities, consumer electronics, electric and autom autonomous vehicles. Now, people, uh, those of you who, are, who have interest in going to any one of these fields, this class will be good for you. This class will be a good fundamental for you, right? Because that's gonna be what, uh, this is gonna be uh, something that you will be um, encountering or coming across um, uh, in any of these um, industries. Right. Especially uh, the first one, you know, uh, DC to DC converter industry, which is big, right? In Silicon Valley, uh, most of the people taking this class, they got um, hired by, you know, companies in Silicon Valley, right? So, uh, so that's um, what I believe, you know, who should take this class, right? Any questions so far? All right, next thing would be, um, okay, what's on the agenda? Uh, okay, review syllabus, sorry. Um, review syllabus, all right. Let's go to uh, week one right here. Okay. Syllabus. All right, it's coming up. Okay, here it is. All right, so um, I have some uh, information. Um, the first part of the syllabus uh, to contact me, you know, my email. Uh, I won't be on, <laughs> on campus this quarter. So yeah, just email would be the, the best way or office hours would be the best way to um, uh, reach out to me. Um, Lectures, I will, be, I will be giving synchronous lectures using Zoom, and um, you already got this uh, link, right? So just in case you've forgotten the, the link, uh, it's on the syllabus, right? And the passcode as well. Uh, as I said earlier, in addition to uh, the Zoom lectures, I will be um, doing um, video recordings of my lectures to be posted on YouTube. And later on, once I post it on YouTube, I will um, share the link. Um, on canvas All right any question on the lecture section of this syllabus office hours will also be um, conducted online via zoom and this would be the the link All right so just click on that link or, or use this meeting id and passcode of um, office hour and um, that's how you would um, um, do the office hours this uh this quarter, right? Um, virtual office hours. And uh, I have a waiting room for that, uh, for, for this office hour. So if you um, get in, you know, you may not be um, right away um, get into the main room. You might be in the waiting room because, you know, somebody's already ahead of you. Right? So in that case, you know, just please wait. Right? Just like any, you know, the physical office hours. Right? Um, if somebody's in my office already, you know, you, um, you know please uh, wait outside until that person is done all right um any question on the office hours and um, beyond these um, office hours i forgot to mention uh, my office hours are uh, mondays wednesdays two to four and tuesdays three to four right now if you would like if for some whatever reasons uh this you know conflicts with um your classes you know all these um office hours then feel free to um 
you know, email me and uh, and we can, uh, I'll be more than happy to schedule a different um, time for your office hours, right? So by appointment as well. Right? So I'm, I'm okay with that, right? Uh, if we have a physical, uh, um, if, if the campus is back, then usually I have um, open door policy, right? So beyond these official office hours, anytime my, my door is open, uh, my office door is open, then you're welcome to start by, but you know, I don't have any physical in office uh, at this point. <laughs> so, but you know, definitely um, uh, email me, right? If you uh, would like to uh, set up um, uh, a different time for office hours, <coughs> excuse me. So far so good, any questions so far? All right, next would be the textbook. Um, I have my own textbook. Um, let's see if I have uh, it on here. I'll be, I'll do yes. Uh, we'll talk about the first quiz uh, after this. So my textbook um, is different uh, from other textbooks. If you ever, if you already receive um, my textbook, you know you know what I'm talking about, right? Um, it's quite thick. Um, you know, it's based on. Um, 21 years, you know, of teaching this class, and um, uh, this textbook um, is meant to be um, a reference for you in the future. Uh, that's what I have in mind when I put this uh, put together this textbook, and uh, I hope that the cost uh, is not too much uh, for this for this textbook. You know, believe me, when I uh, started this um, teaching this class a long time ago. Um, textbooks are very expensive, as you know it, right? Um, at the time, I used a textbook by, I can't recall by whom now. It was um, $150, you know, and it's not even as thick as this one and covers less. And then I changed the textbook to uh, another one that, that was $180, uh, you know, um, a price. And the thing is, you know, uh, all of these textbooks, they're good, but, you know, I'm, I have my own ways of uh, teaching the class and I have my own um, selections of course materials from, any, you know, from these textbooks. So not one of the textbooks actually cater to my, my need. So therefore, you know, I've decided to, uh, to just um, have my own textbook, right? And in addition to that, uh, my textbook uh, is also, uh, the same as you know, lecture slides. So whatever you see, um, you know, on the on the lectures, that's what you see on the book. Right? That way, um, you don't need to take notes, or that way it requires minimum amount of you know uh, taking notes. Right? That way you can focus more on the discussion rather than you know busy taking notes. Right? So you'll see that you know we we'll go over some slides today, but whatever you see on the slides that I'm, I'll be sharing, that's what you'll be seeing on the book, right, or in the book, right? So it's straight to the point content, unlike, you know, um, traditional textbooks that have so, mu so much, you know, wordings and stuff. So here it's just straight to the points, right? Same as lecture slides, and also end of uh, chapter problems are past exam and quiz questions. So I know that when I was a student, you know, um, a good tool of uh, preparing for test uh, for a certain professor, or any professor, I would say, would be to uh, look at the past exams that the professor gave, right? So for this class, you don't need to ask, you know, uh, previous students who took this class, you know, last year or years ago, right? Um, you don't need to do that and ask them to, to share, you know, the old test, because you have it in your book. In fact, I'm going to assign homework from this book, you know, end of chapter problems, which which were you know uh, past um, test problems. So by doing homework, you're actually practicing at the same time um, how to do my test, right? or or you you become you become familiar with the style of you know problems that I'll be giving uh, for the test, right? So that's um, again another uh, objective of having my own book. Um, hopefully it makes sense. Okay, any questions? Uh, I have a question. Will uh, lecture slides be posted? No, because they're in the book. They're, they're the book. Oh, okay. Yeah, 
So yeah, uh, slides are the book, right? You'll see. Um, so if you have the book, then uh, then yeah, um, then you have all the slides, right? Any other questions? Um, sorry, um, I have another one. Sure. Um, regarding the textbook, I haven't received my textbook yet, even though I ordered it pretty much when you emailed us to. Um, and I was wondering what to do this week regarding not having it. Yeah, so for this week, this happened in the past as well. Um, um, so what I usually do is I post, you know, usually I post um, the first, in the past, I posted the first chapter. And hopefully um, by early next week or late this week, you receive the book. And you might want to follow up uh, with the publisher, you know, ask about the status of your order as well. If you ordered it a long time ago, then you, know, you need to definitely contact them. Hopefully you know, everything um, is, um, you know, it's going well though. Um, okay. Thank you. All right. Yeah, so yeah, I'll do that. I haven't done it yet, so, but I will post the first chapter of the book on Canvas, right? Any other questions? Yeah, the book is getting thicker and thicker because uh, I, I like to uh, add more and more practical and rele relevant um, materials in that book. Again, you know, in the future, I'm hoping this book uh, could serve you as a reference, a good reference uh, for, you know, for electronics, you know, at least the basic of electronics, right? Any other questions? I had a quick question regarding about the course in general, because I know it's just not one class, it's kind of a series of classes. Are uh -huh. you ever going to talk about wireless inductive charging? Is that uh, in the realm of, of this course? No, it's a okay. wireless inductive does a very specific um, application, right? So, um, yeah. yeah, what we are talking about in this class is, you know, um, the fundamentals of uh, designing one, right? Mm -hmm. So wireless uh, inductive is what I have on, what, I have a picture of it in the book, right? And, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and um, I don't think we'll have the time, unfortunately, to go into um, any specific application of electronics, sure. right? Um, uh, but, Again, you know, in order to design one, you're gonna have to know how to do a DC to DC converter, how to actually know how to convert from DC to high frequency AC, right? and then back down from high frequency AC to DC. This class covers you know, those aspects, but not specifically on how to design a wireless you know, inductive charging. Right? Cool beans, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? All right. Um, yeah, so um, you'll see that the, that this class covers a lot of materials already. Uh, um, so that's why I said earlier that this is going to be um, just uh, covering the, you know, the fundamentals of uh, energy, converting energy from one form to another form. All right. Well, what else do I have here? Uh, okay. Let's go back to the uh, syllabus which would be right here. Yeah. Okay, so that's um, our textbook. It looks like this. That's the cover of the text of the book. Right. Um, and then for grading, um, lab work and final projects gonna be 25%. So um, I'll talk about the final project in the lab instead of uh, in the lecture. So, so if you have, uh, you have the labs, um, some of you have the lab today. Uh, some others have the labs on Thursday, so I'll talk more about the project there, right? Um, that's 25%. Uh, that's a, a quarter of your grade. Uh, that's one out of uh, four units total. Homework is going to be 15%. As I said earlier, it's going to be assigned from the textbook. And again, I strongly encourage you um, take this homework seriously because that's uh, how you would practice. So get familiar with, you know, past exams I, I, you know, I gave to this class. Online quizzes, uh, this would basically be uh, conceptual, um, mostly conceptual, I should say. Not, not every single one, but mostly conceptual. Um, um, time limit as well, right? Uh, multiple choice. And this is again um, um, to um, assess uh, your understanding of the concepts, right? Um, so mostly it's going to be conceptual. 
And you do have your first quiz this week. And this first quiz is actually um, um, where you can get three points. Right? Because uh, as long as you take it, then you get uh, full credit. Uh, where is that page? Yeah, so this uh, first quiz. Right? Um, so please uh, do that um, before this Friday. Uh, let's see quizzes right here. Yeah. Okay, so it's a pre-assessment quiz. Uh, it's basically uh, a way for me to understand um, level of knowledge you have for this class. Right? So don't worry if you uh, got very low score, right? Uh, if you got one out of 10, don't worry about it. You know, it's, um, um, I will change all the scores to uh, full points by we by this weekend all right so please uh, try your best try not to look uh try not to google the answers <laughs> try to try not to uh look up you know or look for the answers in the book uh, just um you know uh try to answer without um or based on i should say based on what you've learned from previous circuits classes or previous you know uh, other e classes right um again it's just an assessment quiz i, yes. I think that's still on public yeah, oh, okay, yeah, I will publish it soon. Maybe I'll do it now, there. <laughs> there you go. Now it's published, All right? So you can take it after this class, uh, between now and, and um, Friday, September 18, before midnight, All right? Is that clear? All right, so please take it, um, okay, and then you get full credit, all right. Um, all right, let's go back to the syllabus. I have to go back, huh? So slow. Come on, there you go. Okay. So quizzes, 15%. Uh, um, if you um, understand the materials, um, I would say this will be, you know, um, easy quiz for you, easy 15%. Uh, definitely you have to go through uh, the materials, you know, re review uh, in the book. Then it should be an easy quiz for you, right? Um, it's more like for assessments, but now you're gonna be graded. You're, you're gonna be graded for your assessment, right? Um, Midterm exam. Uh, there's only one, that's going to be 20% online synchronous. And then final exam, 25% online synchronous. And uh, please note that my final exam is not comprehensive. Uh, it'll be too much for you to, uh, to have a comprehensive final uh, due to a lot of you know, materials that's going to be covered in this class. All right, so it's just another midterm. That's the way I, I look at this uh, final exam. All right, so you have midterm number one and midterm number two, which I call final exam. <laughs> right, so midterm number two is, uh, is your final exam, okay? And why is it worth more? Because it's gonna be two hour um, final, two hour test. Right? It's not three hours. I know we're scheduled to do it for three hours, but uh, uh, that three hours is too, you know, too long, right? Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna um, uh, short, um, make, make the final, uh, make the test order. Uh, by having it, you know, a two hour, by having a two hour test instead of three hours. All right. Any question on this? All right. Moving on. So these are what we're going to cover in this class. All right. Uh, hopefully today we'll get the chance to uh, talk a little bit about the first topic there. Uh, and then uh, you know why, what, where, power electronics, and then we go over power computations, review of power computations, overview of power semiconductor devices, and then we do rectifiers uh, from you know power flow point of view. I know that you understand you um, you've taken electronics before and you know what a rectifier circuit is, but you'll be amazed to find out from this class that there's a lot more than what you 
already seen under rectifiers, okay? <laughs> so we'll, we'll uh, go into that uh, in this class. And then um, AC to AC converters, right? How do you convert from AC to AC? And then uh, the next one is DC to DC converters. How do you convert from DC to another DC? And that could be non-isolated and isolated. And I believe more, a lot of people are interested in these topics. So I'll, I'll be spending um, um, quite a you know, um, number of uh, lectures. Uh, we were spending a number of lectures to cover these uh, two topics, okay? Um, we'll, we'll go over buck, boost, buck boost, push, pull, forward, and flyback. Right, so those six uh, topologies. If you understand those six, then whatever topology you have in the future, you will be able to analyze, right? In fact, the, the key here is actually buck converter, right? If you understand buck, like, um, you know, um, thoroughly, then um, the rest of the topologies will be, um, you know, easy for you to analyze. But that, that's the key though, you have to understand fully or thoroughly how the buck converter works, okay? And the last topic would be um, um, converting DC to AC, right? Uh, basically, we call this inverter, right? And single phase uh, only for this class. Uh, in the next class, for 11, we'll, we'll do the three phase, right? All right, so then uh, in terms of the software, um, I decided to use um, ORCAD and LT Spice, even though I would like to do um, another one, but um, uh, I don't think um, I mean, it'll be more difficult to, uh, uh, um, uh, how do I say this? Uh, it'll be more difficult to, uh, uh, to learn three, I would say, three solvers at a time, at, at a time. Most of you already know how to use LT Spice, and I would still be using it because, you know, uh, I think it's a very good software for secret analysis. Uh, user friendly as well, but for this class, I'm going to force you to use ORCAD. Right, underline force. <laughs> I'll, I require you to use ORCAD. Uh, the reason being, you know, or, uh, well, LT Spice is great, but uh, LT Spice is being made by a company, right, called LT, or not LT, ADI nowadays, right? Um, so. LT Spice is um, it's a great um, software for secret analysis, but it's geared toward using products uh, made by ADI. Right? Um, so, um, yeah, uh, it's great, but it's not you know the industry standard. Right? Cause that's only uh, catered to uh, one company. Uh, if you want a more uh, a broad, uh, if you want a, a industry standard um, software. Uh, for secret analysis, then you would, I would say you should uh, learn ORCAD, which you will for this class. And one that is coming up is called Simplis, but that's something that I would probably um, most likely do in 411. So for 410, we'll do ORCAD, and for 411, if you're taking 411, we'll do Simplis, right? And for ORCAD, um, I've, um, um, I have provided you with two different options. Number one is to download from Cadence website. Uh, and the second one is to uh, download the older version from Canvas. Right, so if you go to uh, E410 Canvas, uh, there should be a link. Maybe I haven't published it yet, but uh, there is a link for you to download the older version of ORCAD. Or um, I believe it's version 9 point something, I don't remember. But the latest version is 17 point something, right? And um, yeah, either one you choose is fine with me. Uh, I've heard that some people are having a problem with uh, downloading from Cadence website. That's very unfortunate because, you know, usually it's so easy, used to be so easy uh, to download uh, the student version from Cadence website. But nowadays, they, they, you, yeah, nowadays you have to go through a sign up you know, process uh, and with, you know, host ID and stuff like that. So yeah, if you don't want to go through that process, go ahead and, um, download the older version from Canvas, okay? That should be enough for this class. Uh, the, the, the interface looks different, but the way you, uh, you, uh, the way you navigate um, around the um, software is gonna be similar, right? Okay, any question on this?
Professor, I had a question. Yes. Oops, is that feedback? All right. Um, so normally this, under normal circumstances, this class wouldn't be virtual. So my question is, in the future, after we, you know, we've taken this course, would it be possible to, to talk to you about how the lab should work in person or maybe, um, you know, see, see how the equipment actually, the things that are supposed to be done in the power electronics class in the lab? Yeah, that's possible. You know, um, that's probably something that, um, that I could do in 411, uh, but not this class. Right. Uh, in, in, in other words, you know, I could um, uh, video uh, or, or I could uh, uh, have a video recording of me, you know, working in the lab uh, to actually use, you know, um, some of the equipment. Um, but, you know, for this, uh, for this class, you know, it's going to be uh, tough to do. Yeah. Does, does that answer your question or? Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right. So for this class, you know, um, we'll. My approach is, you know, let's take it slow, slow at a time. You know, we it's kind of uh, overwhelming, you know, for me, and for, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure for you as well, to do everything online. And so, yeah, let's uh, take it slowly for this uh, quarter. And then, uh, if you're interested, you know, then you take the next one, and for the next one, then. Um, we can spend more time uh, on, uh, you know, on a more, um, what do you call it, um, um, application, maybe, or more application-oriented um, stuff right, um, in 4.11, right? So let's just um, focus on covering the basics for this class and determine whether or not you like this class after the end of the quarter. If you are, then go ahead and proceed with the next class and that's where we have more time to spend on you know, some uh, a more application type of uh, materials, All right? Any other questions? If not, these are the tentative schedule for uh, this quarter. Right? I'm gonna try my best to, uh, to follow this uh, schedule. As you can see, I'm spending uh, Quite you know, a few lectures on DC to DC converters. You know, that's a big topic, so I'm going to spend um, many lectures on that. All right. Any question on this? All right. If not, then um, the lab. Uh, I'm going to talk more about the lab today and on Thursday when you have the lab sections. But um, what what I would like to mention though is that uh, for for section two and three. You will share the same uh, link and um, uh, meeting ID, as you can see from here. Uh, section four, I don't know how to um, schedule Zoom to actually uh, do, uh, what do you call it, um, 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 schedule, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, rep not repetitive, but, um, you know, weekly meetings. Uh, True. Weekly Recurring, oh my God, yes, thank you. Recurring meetings uh, that's happening at different times. Uh, so I still don't know how to do it. So, uh, so for those of you who are in section four, uh, please make sure that you use this uh, uh, meeting ID and link, okay? And for the first week, uh, as you can see from my agenda here, uh, we will be forming two person group uh, two-person groups, right? And then we'll go over some uh, one exercise on uh, ORCAD, right? So that's what we that's what I plan to do this week. And then uh, one one more thing about the lab, right? Um, I know that you already enrolled to a specific uh, section, but since this is a, a virtual online lab, um, I'm I'm okay with you switching to a different section, right? Uh, if you want to team up with somebody that you would like to team up with. Uh, you can go to a different section uh, unofficially though, uh, you don't have to officially uh, switch it, uh, but unofficially do that. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then that will be it, but you must uh, stay with that new section for the rest of the quarter though. You cannot just switch back and forth uh, every week, right? So once you switch to a different section unofficially, then stick with that section. Does that make sense? Okay. 
So uh, again, because there's uh, no uh, limit on the uh, class, on the, there's no class limit for the section, then yeah, you could, I could definitely accommodate you on, on this, okay? Any question on the labs? Um, as I said, you know, I'll go over the lab uh, later uh, during the lab sections. All right, let me stop sharing for now. Any questions? No? All right, so if everything looks good, uh, let's uh, look at um, the slides that I have here. Let me share the screen again. Uh, I, I have a, a quick yes. question, I guess, real quick. Go ahead. Go um, ahead. As far as reading the book, would you recommend doing it before or after we go over the the topic that we're going to be covering? Yeah, um, my uh, late father always, you know, told me when I was a student that in order for us, in order for me to be a, to understand the material, you have to read the materials before and after. So that's what I did when I was a student. I followed his, you know, his advice, and I'm gonna give you the same advice. Right? So if you could, please read it before the class and after the class, right? Um, sure, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Uh, here's the book, right? So when you have a book, this is what you'll be seeing, right? That's the cover of the, or not the cover, but the first page, very first page of the book. And then a um, you know, table of contents, what have you. All right. And then um, let's jump ahead to um, chapter one. All right, right here, right? So whatever you're seeing here on the screen, that's what you'll be seeing in the textbook. So if you have the textbook by now, you know what I'm talking about, right? You just go ahead and open your textbook and you're gonna be seeing exactly the same, right? Um, so um, how many, how long do I have? I have about 18 minutes, okay, that should be enough. Okay, so the very first topic I would like to go over today um, will be the three W questions of polytronics. What is polytronics? Why polytronics? And where uh, are these polytronics, right? So that's the first TW questions. Um, all right, let's start with uh, the triangle. I like this triangle. Right? The way I um, think about polytronic is that it is a field that um, becomes, um, uh, what do you call it? Becomes um, critical or important due to the advancement, advancement of three different sub EE fields, namely systems and controls on one side, power and energy on another side, and electronics and devices on uh, the last side, right? So we can think of uh, power electronics having three sides, just like a triangle, right? Um, different, uh, three different fo uh, uh, focuses of power electronics, and every one of these contributes to the advancement for, for power electronics, right? So if you like uh, power electronics, if you like E410, then uh, in the future you might um, uh, you might like um, the power side of power electronics, or you might want to focus on the electronic side of power electronics, as well as the systems and control side of power electronics. Right? Um, so these are uh, three different uh, subfields that you can focus on under power electronics, right? And uh, every single one of these have you know their challenges, right? Um, on research, you know, directions and uh, you know, people dedicated to you know these different uh, uh, subfields. And so, um, on the power and energy side, you know, you can go deeper into uh, studying power converter topologies. That's what I, I'm actually focusing on. So I'm, I'm actually focusing on the power and energy side of the power electronics. I like to tinker with uh, topologies. Um, I have two patents so far. Um, on topologies. My first patent, US patent, is on uh, multi-phase buck converter. The second patent I have is on the multiple input single output converter, which is um, uh, abbreviated as MISO, you know, the Japanese soup. Right? And uh, the third one, I'm actually filing another patent this year. That's going to be on a hybrid um, uh, sw uh, switching capacitance converter. So I like to 
uh, play with topologies. It's, it's very um, interesting to me. It's like uh, trying to put together, you know, pieces of puzzles uh, to try to achieve something. You know, that's uh, uh, the side that I'm interested most. Um, electronics and devices. Uh, um, so we all uh, the advancements of electronics to this uh, field as well. Uh, you heard about, you know, uh, GAN devices, uh, silicon carbide, you know, those are people who are interested in um, improving uh, devices so that we can, um, we can uh, improve the performance as well as the capability of, capability of polyconics uh, converters, right? So, so now you, um, if you're interested in those on, and that, on that side, then uh, definitely, you know, uh, that's something that, uh, that would be uh, needed at, uh, as well for this um, field. And then on the systems and the control side, if you like the control side of uh, for electronics, you could go to that route as well. We have, uh, you know, um, digital controls is a big thing as well as the intelligent controls of uh, power converters, right? Um, uh, so many papers or researchers today trying to look into ways to uh, to do the controls of power converters using all of these type of intelligent controls that I don't even know what they are. You know, so for example, uh, particle swarm optimizations, uh, ants optimization, you know, and then uh, what do you call that uh, animal that uh, blinks uh, like lights? <laughs> what do you call that? <laughs> what do you call that? Fireflies. Fireflies, yeah. So there's fireflies algorithm, all kinds. I don't even know. And and uh, luckily uh, at Cal Poly uh, Electrical Engineering Department, we have one expert on this. Uh, her name is uh, Professor Helen Yu. So if you're interested in this type of thing and want to apply it into polytronics, you could. Right. Um, but definitely, it's not my cup of tea. You know, I don't I don't understand what's going on with that with that field. So as, as you can see, you know, it's a, a big field by itself, right? So that's why you know it's very hard to keep up. It's a never-ending work, you know, to actually be able to uh, uh, um, um, develop a modern polytronics, you know, uh, curriculum in our program, <laughs> as you can tell from this triangle, right? Okay. So today, as I said, I'm focusing more on topologies. Right? Again, feel free to interrupt me, okay? If you have any questions, what is polytronics? Uh, this is a tricky uh, question because and everybody has their own definition of polytronics. So I said, why not? I came up with another <laughs> definition of polytronics. So this is the definition I came up with that I like the most is that polytronics the study of processing the flow of electric energy efficiently by controlling semiconductor devices to meet loads and or user requirements. Uh, that's, that's my own definition of it. So we'll be studying ways to convert energy, right? Or, or ways to process energy flow. Not only that we learn how to uh, process how energy flows, but also do it in the most efficient way. And we are doing it through devices, right? Through electronic devices, okay? If I put words into block diagram, this is basically what it is. Right, so you have input uh, power, you have a uh, load for power supply, and then you have power processor, then you have the loads and user requirements, and there's a feedback control signal that goes back into the power processor. I guess you can see this. Right. Um, all right, and then there's energy flow right there. All right, and uh, keep in mind, uh, if you look at the energy flow, look at the direction of energy flow, it is possible for energy flow to go from power source to the load, as well as from the load back to the uh, to the source, right? So most uh, applications actually um, requiring you to provide the power flow from source to the load. Can you think of uh, any application that um, um, provides energy flow back to the source from the load? Anybody? Solar generative braking. Regenerative braking, yeah, that's, that's it right there. All right, so uh, that's one example, um, regenerative braking. Right? Uh, that's when we uh, need uh, power to flow back from the load back to the, um, to the source, right? And then there's, uh, there are others, um, for example, um, uh, battery charging tester, right? So instead of uh, cons uh, 
while you're when you're testing batteries, you know, charging, discharging, um, instead of uh, consuming the power and lose the power, why not put that power back into the into the grid, into your um, into the utility grid, right? So that's another thing. Um, but um, I think regenerative, regenerative braking is the the main application of the main example for this um, back, back power flow, right? Okay? Um, the, is, if you look at the input right here, the input could be any types, AC, DC, but most uh, of the input, most of the source that we have today is actually AC, right? Um, from the utilities. So we'd be dealing with AC with 60 Hertz in the United States, right? Or if you go to uh, Asian countries, it's 50 hertz. Right? So that's that's uh, that will be you know uh, the type of source that we will encounter in this uh, country. You know, AC 60 hertz, and the load, of course, going to be um, um, all kinds, right? AC, DC, right? And so the question then is is that you know if you have um, a source of 60 hertz, how do you match it with the load, which is not necessarily an, an AC load, right? It could be a DC load. And not only that though, um, the load could still be AC, but what if the load requires different frequency, not 60 Hertz, let's say 400 Hertz, right? Or higher frequencies such as the ones, such as the AC system used on ships and on um, airplanes. Right? So then you're gonna have to have a way to, you know, to convert this, to match this, right? Okay, all right. And the feedback, see the feedback loop right here, right? Uh, most of uh, power, power converters with, would have that feedback, but not every, every converter has it, right? So there's some converters that don't require feedback, right? But if the power converters do not require feedback, that means it, it will be relying on uh, the source to uh, be able to uh, regulate um, the, the, the voltage most likely, right? So um, one very good example of a power converter that, do not, uh, that does not require feedback is rectifier. So you have an AC input, but then the output is DC, and so you put you know, diodes, right? A bridge rectifier, for example, for that, exa for that circuit, notice that there is no feedback. Right? If you're familiar with rectifier, there is no feedback. But uh, how, do you act, how do you regulate the output voltage then? Well, by relying on the source to regulate its voltage. So if the source is regulated, then you don't really need um, the feedback to regulate the output voltage. Is that, is that clear? All right, any questions? All right, the next thing would be why power electronics? Uh, I'm gonna go through this quickly. Right. Um, that's another thing with the with this book, right? Since I don't have to write anything, right, or draw anything, that's why we can go faster by having this book. I can because there's a lot of materials to cover, so I need a strategy to be able to cover all the materials in 10 weeks. So having this textbook, I think, will definitely help. Right. So here's an example where we can actually go fast without me writing this down. So um, why power electronics? Um, any electrical systems will require electrical power. I mentioned this earlier. The electrical power supply often comes in a form that does not match the operating requirements of the system. For example, computers. Right? Computers um, require DC voltage at various levels to power its many chips while the available power is AC. Another example. Portable electronics require DC voltages for its many chips, right? So if you have a smartphone, right? Realize it or not, inside that smartphone, we have so many chips, right? So many ICs. And every single IC would require, you know, a various level of DC voltage. However, as you know, there's only one source of um, supply, in, uh, one, one energy source in the smartphone, which would be the battery. And so the battery only gives out one voltage. So how do you go from one voltage from the battery to different level voltages 
required by the chips. Then you need DC to DC converters, right? You need power electronics to do that. So that's another example. Uh, rooftop solar panels produce DC while our homes are using AC. So you need to have uh, a way to uh, match the two. So basically, um, knowledge of matching electrical power requirement when available power with available power supply should be ass essential to every EE. And that's why I said earlier that this class would be required for every EE. All right. You, you remember uh, Transformer, right? Not the movies, but um, the Transformer that you learn in circuits class, right? Um, let's just have a box here. Let me switch over to um, uh, empty. If you have a transformer, right, uh, you have AC input and you have AC output, yes? So a transformer is actually um, um, a, a power converter as well. It, it can only uh, convert um, RMS, right, of the AC voltage, right? It could be step up, it could be step down, right? Now, let me ask you this. Have you ever seen a transformer that works for DC? Can we have the same structures? No. No. No, right? If you change this to DC, that's not going to work, right? Because transformer is working based on changing magnetic flux. Changing magnetic flux, exactly. So if, you're, if your flux is produced by DC, then there is no changing flux. Therefore, transformer is not going to operate, right? But what's wonderful about uh, power electronics is that I could have the same box, not necessarily the same physical structure, you know, coils and stuff like that, but I could actually do the same function here, right, as a transformer would, right? Except this one now, this one now works for DC. This is actually one of the reasons why I fell in love with power electronics because with power electronics, we can have a DC transformer. Isn't that wonderful? Uh, if you have power electronics here, then output would be higher or lower than input. Basically, you have a transformer, but this transformer works for DC, right? So to me, that's, uh, yeah, that's really impressive that we have this technology. This is the key technology that Edison didn't have, right? Otherwise, we probably have DC all around. <laughs> Unfortunately, we have AC now. You know, um, for those of you who know me very well, I, I don't like AC that much. Uh, AC is a, you know, too much hassles with AC. Right? Um, so let's see, back to here. Right? So that's another uh, importance of uh, power electronics. Third one, um, potential in energy saving through efficient power conversion, which gives you economic benefit. Uh, so if you can be efficient, which we can do using power electronics, then you can save energy. Saving energy means saving money. Uh, so globally, for example, electric power is used at an average of, check this out, 12 billion kilowatts every hour of every day of every year. That's not a small number, is it? Uh, that's a big number. So we can save um, even 1% of this using efficient power conversion, then the amount of energy being saved is, a, you know, is big. Right? Globally, it's going to be big. More than 40%, about 4.8 billion kilowatts of electric power generated is being reprocessed to some form of power electronics. Right? So that's why it is important for EEs to learn this. Right? Expanded market demand for power electronics. For example, consumer electronics. If you're interested in cons consumer electronics, you will, I would say you will be you know, <laughs> using power electronics. Right. Um, consumer electronics, including, including digital devices, which account for up to approximately a fifth of total power consumptions. Right. When you are charging your tablet, charging your laptop, charging your smartphone, it has to go through power electronics. Switch mode power supplies, um, UPS, not the United Parcel Services, but it's an <laughs> uninterruptible power supplies being used in data centers. Those are power electronics, guys. Renewable energy, there you are, right? So that, that's another thing that uh, makes power electronics becomes very important these days, right? Um, because of renewable energy, the increased use of renewable energy, solar panels, right? 
um, yeah, take a look at the numbers, 33% by 2020. China has targeted 20% by 2020 and so on and so forth. Industrial automation, transportation, electric vehicles, right? All electronics inside electric vehicles, you know, that's what you'll be seeing. Uh, I'm almost done and I'm almost running out of time. I'm running out of time. Utility scale, right? Flexible AC transmission system. How do you actually uh, manage AC, AC power? As I said earlier, you know, AC is, um, is not an easy thing to control. So you, you, it needs help. Uh, nowadays, you, you know, you get help from uh, power electronics. And then energy storage, right? Uh, that's another thing that's um, becoming very important these days, right? And take a look at the number here. Uh, CPUC, which is California Public Utilities, una una uh, unanimously approved its proposed mandate that will require the state's big three investor-owned utilities to add, check out the number here, 1.3 gigawatts of energy storage to their grids. And guess what uh, energy storage is producing? Is it AC or DC? You know the answer, right? It's DC. But yet utilities are running AC. Guess what you need? Power electronics to convert from DC to AC, right? So where do we find power electronics? Practically everywhere. And I will continue this next time though, because I'm running out of time. All right. All right. So that, I think um, we have until 11, right, for this class. So now it's 11 o'clock. Um, uh, any questions before we adjourn?